Hi everybody and welcome to another awesome tutorial. My name is Dawn and I am the Cordelia to the nerdygirlcreative.com Scooby Gang. Nerdygirlcreative.com is a place where you can create, learn, and share graphic design ideas and projects as well as get awesome design assets and a lot of freebies. This week I'm going to show you how to create your own grit texture patterns using images that you have maybe taken a photo of or you found on, you know, unsplash.com or somewhere where you found a really amazing texture and you want to, you know, learn how to use it and put it on uh, photos or, you know, even bring it into Illustrator, which I'm going to show you how to do and create a vector version of your grit texture so that you can use it on awesome, you know, uh, badges sort of like this one right here. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go ahead and start in Photoshop. All right, and so the first image that we're going to work with is this uh, image that I took over here with my Nikon D3300. Um, this I actually did um, in my bathroom. I laid down a black background and I got into my makeup kit and I ended up, um, you, know, you know, flicking my... Um, my powder <laughs> foundation um, into these grains so that I could catch them at high speed um, and catch all these uh, beautiful little textures that you got going on here. So that's how I created this photo. Um, but uh, to use it in our image to create our textures, you basically, you don't really have to do a whole lot with this, especially because it has a black background, which is really, really great. Um, since it has a black background, we can use our blending modes to um, change its blend and it will lay over our images and in interesting in different ways. So um, over here I have the grit texture already over and so I placed this image on top of the the image of the girl sitting and we're just gonna kind of mess with these um, overlays. So basically all these ones up here in the top they kind of get rid or you know mess with the darkness of photos. So when you choose these you know they're gonna kind of pull away from the black that's going to go in the back and it's going to leave these nice grit speckles kind of thing going on. So if you hit screen, um, it pulls all of the black out and, you know, and then it kind of leaves this nice texture that you have here. Um, but if you go ahead and mess with some of the other ones, the blending modes here, like darken, it kind of doesn't really do anything that you want, didn't work out. Multiply, eh, it doesn't really, you kind of have to play with them and see which ones that are going to work out for whichever photo you have. Not every blend mode is going to work the same. So um, linear burns is going to get kind of dark. Um, the color burn, it's kind of interesting if we pull down our opacity. Eh, it's okay. <laughs> so, um, but pretty much lighten screen lighten probably actually is the best in this situation um, or even the the color dodge here I really like the color dodge go going on right now um, it kind of you know puts this nice sheen on the the particles that are in the photo but um, soft light works I mean uh, you know lighten works screen works um, light and color kind of stays the same but um, I really kind of enjoy the dodge um, just because it gives you know something a little bit extra to it. Um, right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that one off. And the next um, image that I work with is this one. <laughs> Actually, it's not really. <laughs> so um, this is a book that I had found, I think from a garage sale or something like that, but it had an interesting texture on it. And um, so what I had done was I scanned the book cover on the top of my scanner. I pulled it in. I pulled out all of the, I kind of inverted the image into black and white. And then I pull out all of the white. <laughs> so it kind of gives you this, this grain texture. Um, but I'm just going to show you, you know, how it kind of looks when you play with the blend modes for, you know, your, your grit texture overlay so that when you get a grit texture kind of like this, you can kind of, you know, see how you can blend it to make it work for you. So um, Obviously, normal is not going to work. Dissolve, it looks really crappy. Darken doesn't really work either. So you just kind of play around with things until you find something that works. Lighten doesn't really do a whole lot. Screen, not so much. Kind of when you get to overlay, like when you come down here into these ones, this is where you can kind of get really good, um, you know, different kinds of blend modes. So um, I actually really like overlay. 
I like soft light. Um, I think only a few of these actually will work with this type of image, but you can get some interesting textures with it. And I think probably soft light or overlay probably give you the best. And then you can kind of combine them. So now you have this like, you know, very grungy, gritty kind of part of your image, um, which is kind of really interesting. So, um, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to take this image and we're gonna bring it into Illustrator and then I'm gonna show you how to vectorize it. So what we want to do is come up here to image and then I'm gonna to go to adjustments and then I'm gonna go ahead and in invert my image. All right, so this flips everything from black and white and then I'm gonna go ahead and start playing around with the, first I'm gonna go with the channel mixer if I can, or the curves. All right, so the first we're gonna do the curves. And I'm gonna kind of pull the blacks down quite a bit. And then I'm gonna do a brush brightness and contrast. So I'm gonna push up the brightness, pull down the contrast. because you kind of want to get rid of some of these weird shapes in the back, but that you also want as much of the texture as you can probably get, so. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm just gonna export it as a JPEG. All right, I'm gonna come over into Illustrator. I'm gonna hit File Open. And then I'm gonna grab my texture. All right, so that image was quite a large image, but you can just kind of pull out so that you can see everything that you're going to work with. And then we're going to go ahead and hit the image and we're going to go with work with image trace. And usually when you have an embedded file, image trace will pop up normally up here on the top. Um, or you can go to window, window and then come down to image trace and then your little pop-up box will come up. Um, so what we want is the black and white logo. And as you can see, it's kind of set at its default, and so it doesn't pick up as much of the texture as uh, you would like. So go ahead and push up the threshold, and it's going to add more paths uh, and pick up a, a lot more of the, the texture. All right, so that's looking about good. Um, some of these shapes are kind of really large and they don't really match a whole lot, but I actually kind of like the variant in it. Um, but when we get to the next step, uh, if you want, you can absolutely delete some, uh, you know, move stuff around and you can kind of play with it a little bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and hit expand. Okay, so now as you can see, if I get really close, all these little blue dots that have popped up and these are all the, t the black texture that we pulled from the other image. So I'm gonna pull back out and I'm just gonna go ahead and ungroup all of these. So I'm gonna hit Command Shift G or Control Shift G on a PC. And then I'm going to, you can either click on the white background or you can kind of come up and select same fill color and then you can also select the white and then just hit delete on the keyboard and then the white will go away so what you want to do is kind of you can group them all together now if you are happy with the way it looks if you don't like these large speckles you can absolutely come in here and individually kind of delete them i kind of like them so i'm just going to leave it but i'm going to go ahead and group all of these together now it's kind of like a sparse sort of texture and what's really nice about this is that you can build it up as much as you would like. So um, I'm actually going to go ahead and do that and create two layers 
So what you can do is you can copy it, which would be Command or Control C on your um, keyboard. And then I'm just going to go ahead and paste it directly on top of itself. So I would hit Command or Control F on the keyboard and that pastes in front, F for front. So, all right, so now we have the, the top one here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna rotate it while holding shift so that it stays, you know, perfectly aligned. And there you have it. So now you have a much more condensed grit type texture that you can use. And if you wanted, you could absolutely control command F again. And then what you would do is you sort of turn it again. You can size up, size down, move these things around, that kind of stuff. Um, shorten it, small it, do whatever you'd like. All right, so now that you vectorize them, you can use them big, small, pretty much however, you know, they're infinitely scalable and they won't lose anything. So I'm just gonna kind of move it up here into this. And then as you can see, it you have a great, awesome grit texture that you've created just from, um, a regular kind of image. Um, I mean, the image was kind of designed to capture a texture, but you, you saw like I had a book. <laughs> you could absolutely do the exact same thing. Scan a book, get it down to its black and white, um, get rid of all of the white sort of thing. And then you can kind of bring it into Illustrator. You can vectorize those paths. Um, and even that texture probably would work a little bit better. The book texture would work probably 10 times better as a, um, as a vector element that way you know it's infinitely scalable and i mean it'll get rid of probably a lot of this gray in here um so that's something i might think about doing in the future um but so as you can see i mean we took one image and we went through a couple of different steps on how you can use it for textures in your photographs um, and as you can see over here i created this small little badge right here and um i took the texture that i created which is very similar, you know, I mean, it's pretty much identical. And then all I did was pull it over to the top of it and then I colored it white over this black background and then you have beautiful grit texture. Um, and you can scale it up, scale it down and use it all the time. <laughs> All right, I hope everybody really enjoyed this tutorial and learning how to create our own grit textures. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to these videos. I create a new freebie or tutorial every week. So if you have any suggestions as what you'd like to see me do next, um, go ahead and leave me a comment in the section below or go over to nerdygirlcreative.com. Check out the blog, send me an email. Um, I have all kinds of crazy stuff over there for you guys. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter. You guys get free goods all the time. So get you know, exclusives. Yay. <laughs> All right. You guys go out there and create something amazing.